tutorial we will discuss how to calculate net radiation and the average vapor pressure deficit for the weather station we are working with. In these columns we have the values of maximum and minimum temperature. We have also maximum relative humidity and minimum relative humidity. To calculate the average vapor pressure or the average vapor pressure deficit, we use these equations, these or these. In this equation that we use to calculate the average vapor pressure for daily data, we have the vapor pressure deficit and saturation evaluated at the maximum temperature, the minimum relative humidity, the saturated vapor pressure for minimum temperature and the maximum relative humidity. To calculate saturated vapor pressure for any case, we use this equation. So, in this column, we calculate the vapor pressure deficit, excuse me, the saturated vapor pressure for maximum temperature, applying this equation. As you can see. Here we put the values of Tmax to calculate this value. We do the same for minimum temperature and we obtain ESN. Therefore, the average vapor pressure at the time of the maximum temperature would be this product. We will get this. And the value of vapor pressure at the time of minimum temperature would be this second term. The average of this column and this column would be the average mean vapor pressure deficit for the day. These values. Applying this equation, we will get this column. Simply by getting the average of the saturated vapor pressures and subtracting the average vapor pressure. Okay, so now we have mean values of vapor pressure that we will need for calculating net radiation. One of the components of net radiation is the long wave losses of when and long wave radiation. This is given by this equation. Rb, which has three components. The first component is dependent on the fraction of clear sky that we discussed in our previous tutorial. The second component would be dependent on the mean vapor pressure of the air. And the third component would be dependent on the air temperature. The product of the three would give us the total losses of long wave radiation throughout the day. First, we calculate the first factor for this equation would be the one dependent on the fraction of clear sky. We had already calculated these fractions of clear sky in our previous tutorial. So we can calculate this first factor. The second factor is the one dependent on the vapor pressure of the air. To do that, we use the mean value that we have already calculated, and we apply this equation. And the third factor depends on the temperature of the air. Note that capital T stands for absolute temperature. So, in the equation, we sum 273 to the mean temperature value that we have in this, in this column. Now, multiplying the three factors, we would get the total losses of long wave radiation Rb. Then, to calculate net radiation, to calculate uh, net radiation we apply this equation where 
RS is solar radiation measured with the station, RB is the long wave losses that we have just calculated, and alpha is the albedo of the crop. If we are working with grass, the albedo would be 0 0.23. So by taking the measured solar radiation that we have uh, already for this station, we have the measured values, applying 0 0.23, and subtracting the long wave losses, we get the net radiation here. This color. Okay. Finally, we had already calculated extraterrestrial radiation. Using this, we can compute the potential or the values of solar radiation for pure sky conditions simply. Assuming that this equals 75% of extraterrestrial radiation, and this is this column using 